In a small temple in the suburbs of Suva, members of the local Hindu community are celebrating the festival of Ram Numi. <laughs> For 10 days, they marked the birthday of Rama, the main character in the religious text, the Ramayana. But this year's celebrations are marked with a touch of anxiety. This temple has only just been refurbished after being set on fire in late March. Celeste Chant recalls the desperate fight to save the temple. We've started putting water. With fill the bucket from the tepia and we run and we run and just throw water on the fire we managed to stop the fire the fire was stopped but the damage was done the perpetrators had piled up and burnt the temple's holy books Probably they may be thinking this is a second-class language, uh, religion and uh, not, not comparatively uh, compared to their religion. This can be another uh, reason why they probably destroyed their holy books as well. An organisation that promotes religious tolerance in Fiji says there's been an escalation in desecrations since the coup five years ago. Since 2000 there have been more. I think we um, found police statistics of 134 cases over the last three years, four years. And this year, since the beginning of 2005, it, there's been a big increase. I've got this disc here and I need you to... Tessa McKenzie says Hindus are becoming more outspoken in condemning the attacks. She fears that could spill over into retaliation. Well, we hope not. We hope not. But, I mean, people only have so much patience. Elsewhere in suburban Suva, I visit Narare Primary School. This is the temple, the main part of the temple. Mrs Prem Chan, the assistant head teacher, tells me how the school's small temple was trashed just three days before. All this was on the floor. They were scattered. All the statues were down. And the holy books which were there, they were all on the floor. It's the third time the temple has been ransacked. Another week, another sacrilege. The local media carried pictures of the desecration on the evening of the incident. Mrs Chan says the attackers distressed her students. They were traumatised because they hadn't seen something so bad as this one. Because it was uh, exam week. They were supposed to sit for their exams and when they came into the rooms and everything was scattered all over, the children were traumatised. The desecrations are now occurring at a frequency of one or two per fortnight, but the police view them as simple break and enters. It seems a common thread, the motive at least, is uh, for cash and other valuables, so it is, it's about uh, looking uh, for, for items that'll, uh, that they'll be able to readily dispose of. That assertion angers Hindu community leaders. They point to the burning of holy books and say the intent is clearly one of sacrilege. What concerns me is the reaction from the police. I, I, you know, I, I, I see that the police uh, generally treats uh, these incidents as a theft or break-in or a burglary. With four desecrations in his constituency already this year, Pratap Chand fears frustration with the police could lead people to take the law into their own hands. You could have uh, some individuals who could uh, lose their patience, who could uh, find themselves uh, extremely intimidated and uh, may feel that they must uh, pay in kind. So that, that potential is always there. Just who is responsible for the desecrations is difficult to say. Most occur in small Hindu temples, with occasional attacks on churches and mosques. But the sharp increase following Fiji's year 2000 coup suggests the desecrations are symptomatic of underlying political tensions. They mirror a spate of desecrations that followed Fiji's original coup back in 1987 when the genie of religious intolerance first escaped. The 1987 coup, we were told that it was the will of God. Christians were tell The Christians involved told us it was the will of God. Uh, Rambuka was portrayed as being a Moses. 
leading his people to freedom from heathen races. And now, while the police maintain the attacks are the work of opportunistic thieves, they also say politicians are beginning to exploit the situation. At the political level, a lot of this plays out. And, of course, when we have instances of, of um, sacrilege occurring in a particular religious uh, group, then that's picked up and can become a political uh, tool or you know, a political uh, weapon against uh, opposing parties where we have this division on racial lines. In the, um, Fiji's Prime Minister, Lysenia Garrisse, like is concerned the desecrations could destabilise his country's fragile post-coup calm. Uh, it could be a destabilising force because uh, religion is also racial, uh, unfortunately. Uh, it, it is an ugly... Uh, issue and uh, I, I, I hope it doesn't develop to a stage where uh, communities uh, confront each other. The dominant church in Fiji is the Methodist Church. I filmed at Suva Choir, acknowledged as perhaps the country's finest. The Methodists are about as close to being a state religion as it's possible to get without being one. Its leadership condemns the desecrations outright. But out in the villages, some Methodist ministers have been involved in desecrations of a different kind. I've come to the village of Grambuka, where beneath the idyllic surface I find another case of sacrilege, this time practiced by a Methodist pastor. I meet a lassie. She takes me to the equivalent of the village green and shows me the handiwork of a local Methodist preacher, Pastor Lameki. Pastor Lameki has taken it upon himself to cleanse villages of their evil past demanding villagers burn carver bowls and other traditional artefacts. Also burnt, the former focal point of Drambuka's village life, the giant vivai tree that offered shade and protection to those gathering beneath its branches. So big was the tree, it overshadowed the Methodist church. Alessi and other villagers now regret the burning. We're now uh, Alatana we have to burn down the trees, well, we burn down the trees. But when we think about that, it makes us um, not feel guilty again because the trees brings us, uh, you know, it's uh, God's gift to us. The, the trees were God's gift and so they shouldn't have been there. Uh, I think that's it. This is the monument erected to honour Pastor Lameki's good works. In a village with five competing churches, the monument clearly stakes out the Methodist preacher's turf. In some ways, Drambuka got off lightly. In other villages, houses have been burnt down. The national president of the Methodist church says he has no knowledge of Pastor Lameki's campaign. But he also doesn't condemn it outright. He says only that headquarters should have been consulted first. Because, uh, that is important for us to know before we can give the final uh, authority to do it uh, on behalf of the Methodist Church or in the name of the Methodist Church. So, so you might, you wouldn't tell him no, you, you, might, you might actually approve of it. Well, that's why I see he has to come and the Methodist hierarchy may or may not approve of Pastor Lameki's methods, but there is some sympathy for his desire for Methodist supremacy. Many Methodists want their church to become the state religion. And as, as a personal opinion, I, I would support it. Because we have freedom of worship, freedom of religion here. All religions can practice, but... Uh, uh, where Fiji is now today, the Christian church has played a very major part. 
Religion plays a central role in the day-to-day -day lives of Fijians, much more so than in Australia. Everywhere you look, there are signs of belief. The danger now, as next year's elections approach, is that the desecrations will continue and religious intolerance will increase. We're very much aware that we've got a lot of um, volatile situations with the upcoming elections. You know, things are bound to get, there's bound to be more pressure on all the pressure points, like the race of religion, the, the economic situation, the poverty and so on. All these areas which are potentially explosive will be under pressure as the election, electioneering goes on. Out in Suva Harbour you can see the island where George Spate is imprisoned. Five years on, it seems Fiji has yet to escape the legacy of the coup he led. Would you believe it, I think, is the reaction to that story. It was filmed and reported by Chris Hammer. Next week, David Brill, Dateline's renowned cameraman producer, goes back to one of his favourite stamping grounds, Vietnam. Vietnam, 1970. I saw a lot of the war. For five years, I filmed it all. 37 years later, I'm back on the Mekong with some Australian Vietnam veterans. Bruce Burrow and Bruce Fraser are on a journey to mourn lost comrades and curse the futility of war. I'm wondering why we ever came here in the first place. Over the next few days, the men will confront the trauma and memories that have haunted them for years. Just the smell of the place is um, quite unnerving, really. For me, anyway, the last five years I've been crying on my own. A moment later, the two men are overcome. It brings the whole horror of, of war and, and our involvement back. Yeah.